Hello everyone, and welcome to the brand new episode of The Graveyard Shift. Tonight, I only have one story for you all. It was submitted by a fan named Justin Collins. The title of the story is The Creature. If you enjoy his story, you can check out his book on Amazon, as well as his Facebook page and his Amazon store, all listed down below. The story itself is incredibly creepy, and I read over it one time to get familiar with it, and then read it again because it just really stuck with me. It's a very, very creepy story, and I'm very excited for you all to hear it. But before that, I want to make a quick little announcement. Some of you may not be aware that I've done audiobooks in the past, but if you'd like to listen to them, they are all available on Audible. I will link them down below. Well, I'll link my favorite ones down below. If you want to help me out and get you a really dope audiobook, then that would be great. Those will be linked below, along with all of Justin's links as well. But, without further ado, let's jump right in and learn about The Creature. It was the year 1979 when I committed my first act of murder. I didn't mean for it to happen since I've always been a calm and relaxed person. Not until the two people in my life ended in a gruesome death. It's not like I had a horrible childhood where I was abused by anyone's hands or objects. I wasn't even molested by anyone. I was a very happy child where I'd gotten anything I wanted without refusal or a fuss. I had always been praised, scored my classes with high grades, and had multiple friends that never left my side. You could say I was the perfect child, a child that every parent wished to have. Now that I was 17, things have changed. Not due to anyone in my life, it just sort of happened. It was early October, and I was calmly reading a novel by my favorite author by the fireplace when it came to mind that I should go right ahead and do what I've always dreamed of. Murder. It was a cold afternoon, and the sky was heavily clouded. The winds picked up a few notches, making eerily sounds that crept through the cracks of the living room windows. The fallen leaves of bright orange and yellow swirled wildly and soft, yet rough circles as I continued reading the long chapters about a murder taking place in Romania. The murderer was taking a dead aim to shoot a passerby that walked along the lonely streets for him to get a thrill of excitement. My mother was in the kitchen making a hot pot of chicken noodle soup while my father was in the den, typing up a report for his newspaper. He was a news reporter and, as for my mother, She was a stay-at-home mom. I had no siblings, and I'm the only child. I never had a pet because my mother happened to be allergic to them. In my opinion, I didn't believe her. She just hated animals and wouldn't take any responsibilities in raising a pet when she had trouble raising me. I'm not saying she's a bad mother. She had some difficulties on handling my different mood swings during different stages of my life. You know? teenager modes. Yep, that's me. My father was too busy running to every scene that had a crime or a business problem or somebody's pet was stuck in a tree. He did anything to have a story to make his money's worth. Kevin, dinner's almost ready, my mother yelled from the kitchen doorway. I stayed silent and not bothered to reply, turning to the next page where the police officers were trying to figure out who could have murdered an innocent person during daylight hours and trying to piece the clues together. The story was getting more fascinating as the murderer kept himself masked by the crime scene, watching them work hard and pinpoint the aim of their suspected shooter. I heard my mother bussing herself in the kitchen, placing the dishes on the table and humming to a tune that sounded like the song Yesterday that was sung by the lead singer Paul McCarthy. My father's typewriter was heard also while he punched each key in a rapid pace. I tuned them out, listening to the wind outdoors and the fire crackling loudly as I pictured the author's story inside my mind. 
like a movie scene coming to life. The next scene in the chapter became intense. The shooter had locked himself in a mausoleum at a random cemetery after he'd escaped the cops that were chasing him, only to find out there was an opened window as one of the cops' head emerged, pointing his gun at the shooter's head. The shooter lost his gun on the way, and the other cop shot at the front gate, popping the lock by the single bullet, entering and cornering the shooter with no way out. You thought this is where you were going to hide? The officer said in a low, menacing voice. Good thing you came in here, because this is going to be your tomb forever. The person you shot was my sister, and now you're going to pay. It wasn't my intention to murder her. You don't understand, officer. I have a sick, demented mind. The mass shooter said in a fearful tone. Not sick enough to kill ten other citizens that did you no wrong the officer said from the window. The masked shooter backed up, hitting the cemented wall. Please, I swear to you, I didn't mean to, he whimpered. The officer by the door positioned his gun directly to the man's chest, aiming a perfect shot. Yeah? Well, it's too late for that. This is for my sister, Nancy. He pulled the trigger and the bullet sliced through the empty crypt, making an echoed sound as it hit right at the man's chest, killing the shooter instantly. The shooter slumped down to the dirty floor, his eyes glazed over and death taken its place. The officer walked forward to remove the man's mask, to reveal his true identity. Both officers gasped when they realized, Kevin, Jim, dinner's ready! My mother yelled from the kitchen doorway again, causing me to drop my book from being startled. I looked down and lifted my book from the carpeted floor, seeing how I lost my place and had to scan where I left off on the chapter. I know you both heard me, my mother yelled once more. My father's rapid keystroke stopped and the door opened from the den. I'm coming, I'm coming, he shouted while mumbling curse words under his breath. I bit my bottom lip, frustrated by my mother's voice and making me lose my spot in the chapter. I slammed the book down on the side table and got up, making my way towards the kitchen. Father was sitting at the head of the table, looking miserable, with dark circles under his eyes due to lack of sleep. His bright green eyes were dull under the kitchen lights. He had on a white dressing shirt with coffee stains on the front. His black hair was tousled and a beard started to grow. He appeared to resemble a living corpse and didn't even bother to look at me when I entered the kitchen to take my place at the table. Mother had on her white dress that had orange splashes here and there as a design, wearing a brown knitted sweater with the sleeves rolled up to her elbows. Her red curly hair was laid out and her perfect shaped oval face was covered in makeup as if she was sitting at a fancy restaurant more than her own home. As for me, I had my father's eyes my mother's hair color that was combed back to perfection because that's how mother wants it. I had on my mustard-colored sweater over my white dressing shirt and my blue iron-pressed khaki pants and my brown loafers that matched my father's pair. Father just stared at the soup and mother was placing her napkin on her lap, picking up her spoon in a fashionable manner. I just moved the small pieces of carrots with my spoon and didn't have an appetite. Eat up your food before it gets cold, Mother said, taking a light sip of her broth. My father and I ignored her. How's work going, honey? Mother asked. My father crunched up the napkin in his hand and threw it on the table. He gave one nasty look to my mother and got up, walked out of the kitchen, straight back to his den, and we both jumped when he slammed the door. Mother fought to contain herself and acted as if nothing occurred. Your father has one column to fill up for the newspaper that isn't pleasant. He should understand and never bring his work home. She cleared her throat and continued eating. Again, I ignored her and my father's erupted action because I completely didn't care and wanted to read the rest of the book. How was school today, dear? She asked me. I stopped tossing the carrots onto the side of the dish and looked up at her. It's Saturday, Mother, I replied. Oh, 
She forced a giggle. These days go by so quickly. I thought it was Friday. I stared hard at her. She kept spooning her broth. Excuse me, mother. I'm not that hungry. But I cooked this especially for you, she protested, giving a hurtful gaze. I sighed and got up from the table. I left the kitchen and went straight to my room, making sure to lock the door for some privacy. I went over to my desk and sat down, looking at some notes I'd written down for my own short story for class of creative writing on Monday morning. It was about this creepy creature that lurked in the woods, taking people's lives whoever crossed over a forbidden wooden log that was made by native Indians and was also devil worshippers. Anyone that crossed over the log held that curse. The creature will awake and come after them, ripping them to shreds by its long black claws and eat their bodies with its long sharp fangs. I know my teacher, Mr. Russell, wasn't going to be pleased, since he hadn't liked how much I've written my assignments that were filled with blood and gore, along with having macabre mine that held too much narcissistic murders that sometimes he thought I needed some type of help and to be medicated. He even suggested it to my mother during a parents' conference meeting, which had my mother tell him that a writer is a writer. Stephen King would have been locked up with the shit he's written. I picked up my pencil, wanting to write the rest and end my homework. That way I could finish up the rest of the book I was reading. I started putting in gory details, how the kid was taken by the creature when a single long scratch over my bedroom window stopped me. My body stiffened, unable to move as the scratch continued until it became silent again. I let out a quiet breath, not realizing I hadn't breathed and slowly turned in my chair. It was now dark, and by the clock read eight. I averted my eyes back to my window and saw nothing. I frowned, feeling confused, hoping it was a stray animal or just a leaf from the wind, but a leaf wouldn't make that kind of sound, nor would any stray animal. I shook my head, deciding it was nothing, and continued with my homework. I wrote down on a separate piece of paper to remind myself to add names to the characters I was creating when the scratch sound started again, though this time it felt closer. Inside the room, on my very own wall. I fought the courage to confront this sound to find nothing but my dresser, my books lined up on the shelves, my bed that was neatly made by my mother, and my small television that my father decided to let me have, only to be watched for about an hour or two. I went towards my bed and leaned down, checking under the bed, seeing nothing. I stood straight up and shrugged my shoulders. Guess my mind is scaring me with all these scary stories, I said to myself. I jotted down the names quickly on the paper, stuffing my work in a folder, and headed for the bathroom to take a quick shower. Finished with my shower, my mother was in the living room by the fire, reading from the book I read earlier. She looked unpleasant by the story plots. Where did you get this book, Kevin? She asked, appearing unhappy. I borrowed it at the school library, I said, unsure why she was getting upset when I had most of the author's books in my room. You shouldn't be reading this, it's too violent, she said closing the book and placing it on her lap. Mom, it's just a story. Nothing to worry about. These type of stories happen in real life. Your father deals with this day to day, and the school shouldn't condone this. I raised you better than that, Kevin. She gave a dramatic sigh. <sighs> Go to your room, Kevin. Being dismissed, I went to my bedroom and badly wanted to slam the door, but knew where that would lead, and I didn't want any more disturbances from my mother. Great. Now I'll never know who the masked shooter was, I mumbled under my breath. Cold winds stopped me in my tracks because my window was wide open, the curtains flowing up and about. I'd sworn it was shut before I left, I said out loud. I furled my brows and went straight to the window, shutting down and snapping the latch in place. It was probably Mother, 
I grumbled, grabbing a book from the shelf and laid it on top of my bed to start reading the same author I was forbidden to enjoy. This time, the story took place in London, England, where there was a copycat killer that took over in killing five women. The killer wanted to take over the famous serial killer fame, Jack the Ripper. Only difference was, the women that were being murdered were not prostitutes. The serial killer caught his victims at the same crime spots as Jack, removing the same organs that the organ killer had done and leaving the crime scene for the Scotland Yard to solve the mysteries of each case. Deepening my mind into the eighth chapter, a long, hard scratch sound on the wooden floor came from underneath my bed. I slowly lifted my eyes, suddenly frightened. I broke out in goose flesh and wanted the sound to disappear. I waited a few minutes for it to happen again, and when it didn't, I went back to reading, only to be caught off guard as the same sound came closer, right by my pillow. Instead of the wall, it was my aluminum headboard, making it screech loudly near my ear. I jumped off the bed, ran straight to my door, turned the knob to no avail. It was unlocked and it wouldn't budge. I pounded my fists, rattling the doorframe, and yelled at the top of my lungs. Mom, Dad, please, Mom, Mom! My voice high-pitched, filled with fear. At 17, yelling for my parents and sounding like a seven-year-old kid had no importance whatsoever. I didn't even care if the kids from my school showed up and seen my reactions. Nothing mattered at all, and I just wanted my parents. Mom, Dad, please! I yelled even more loudly, still fumbling with the doorknob. The door was pushed open so easily that it had knocked me back and fallen to the floor. My father looked down at me, and my mother was right behind him, tying her light blue robe tightly around her waist. Both held worried looks. What the hell is going on here? My father asked, still staring at me. Why are you screaming? My mother asked next, entering the room. I was breathing quickly, tears brimming at the edge of my eyes. I couldn't utter a word. My heart was beating so hard against my chest, and it deafened my ears. Oh, sweetie, did you have a nightmare? My mother asked, coming straight towards me. Stop babying him, Claire, and get up from the floor, Kevin, my father said in a strict tone. Oh, Jim, don't pick on him. She helped me get up and walked me back to my bed. I laid back down, my mother sitting on the edge of the bed. She stroked my hair like she used to do when I was a child. My father clearly got annoyed. He left the room mumbling words under his breath, a new habit he'd gotten used to lately. Your father is under a lot of stress. Tell me what happened, she said in a soft, lovingly mother tone. I closed my eyes and swallowed. I was hearing awful sounds, and I became scared. What kind of sounds? Hard, scratching sounds. I whispered, opening my eyes to look at her. She gave me a light smile, caressing the side of my face with her soft hands. Oh, Kevin, our house is old. It must be the wood, or maybe some rodents that snuck in the attic. Or the basement. Mom... The sound also came from my own headboard. How do you explain that? She shrugged her shoulders like it was nothing. Maybe from all the scary stuff you were writing. Maybe it's making you hear things. It happens. I arched my left brow in disbelief. Really, Mom? She fussed with the blanket and tucked me in, which I didn't mind. Just clear your mind and try to get some sleep. Okay? She got up, placed a soft kiss on my forehead. Good night, Kevin. I love you. I'll see you in the morning. I love you too, Mom. Don't close the door all the way, I said as she was shutting the door. She smiled and left it cracked open. I took a calming intake of air and closed my eyes, praying that nothing will happen during my sleep. During some time in my sleep, I was awoken by having a pressure on the top of my chest. 
The weight was unbearable and snapped my eyes open, causing me to have trouble breathing and struck in terror when I'd seen why. Could this be a nightmare? Or was I fully awake? Either question I couldn't answer, but lie still in my bed and stare at the creature before me. The creature's skin was decaying, grayish yellow, and the smell of rotten meat rafted in the air. Bile crawled up my throat with its stench. Its eyes were hollow, black, sunken eye sockets that went on forever into the darkness. Its canine, long and yellowish, with razor-sharp pointers. I let my eyes roam down, seeing its clothes ripped to shreds and rotted, which had become a nice suit, were now muddied with soil and deterioration, revealing much of its skin that oozed what looked to be slime. It was ripping my bedsheets in slow motion on either side of me. I averted my eyes to see its strong hands that held back long claws, longer than any I'd ever seen on an animal. I realized who this creature was, and it was the one I had created for my story. I didn't utter a sound and stared back into its hollowed eyes. It bared its teeth at me, giving a deep, guttural sound that was frightening and eerie that made my heart stammer against my chest. I had no clue what to do at this very moment. There was no chance in hell I was calling my parents, and clearly no chance to get me out of this mess. I tried to think of what to say, not letting this creature kill me right here and now. All I could do was... nothing. The creature lowered its face, hovering closely above mine. Its breath reeked. It spoke in a whisper. It's time. It's time, I thought to myself. Time for what? The creature slowly floated upward, still staring down at me, its arms spread out on each side. Dark shadows seeped out behind him, swirling around on the ceiling, and then one by one, each shadow made its way down and plunged inside me, causing my body to spasm in excruciating pain. I passed out. Everything went black. The next thing I knew, I was in my parents' bedroom, standing before their bed where they slept. I had no control over my body. The shadows were the ones that possessed me. In my hand, I was twirling an axe, not recollecting where I had gotten it from in the first place. I didn't even know how I came to my parents' bedroom. Everything was in a blur. I'd always wanted to know what it felt like to kill someone, and now... I had that power to feel what it was like because the shadows looked deep into my mind and found my dark secret. The creature stood at the corner of the room, watching the action come to life, a smirk displayed on its horrible mouth. I began moving on my father's side of the bed. I looked down at him, wanting to remember his face before it ended. He was frowning in his sleep, probably having a dream about the report he had to write up over a child that had been killed by his own mother's hands because she thought she was saving him from this horrible world and it bothered my father a lot. He didn't have to worry any longer. I lifted the axe up, positioning it over my shoulder and holding the handle as tightly as I could. I tried to squeeze my eyes shut, but the shadows wouldn't allow it. All my energy went into the first blow, the head of the axe slamming into his face, making a sickening sound as blood squirted out of my face and his brain matter slowly seeped into his pillow. I struggled with the axe to remove it from his skull, and when I did, I kept swinging it down repeatedly, having my mother to awake from her sleep. At first, she stared at me, confused in the dark. Kevin... What do you think you're... Her words cut off as her eyes adjusted in the dark room. She gasped and seen how her husband had no longer had a face. Only mush, blood, and brain matter was all that was left. She began screaming, high pitch and scrambled off the bed, reaching for the phone. It was covered in my father's blood and small pieces of bones from the impact of his skull. I trudged my feet toward her and raised the axe, hearing a female operator on the other line. 911, what's your emergency? 
My mother wasn't able to reply because down went my axe right between her back, slicing through meat and crunching bone. She gave her last surprised gasp and slumped to the floor, my axe barreling down on her with each strike I'd given, her blood spattering everywhere over the wall and ceiling, her dresser on the phone and most of all, on me. I gave my last strike of the axe to her chest and let it fall to the floor. Breathing heavily and dizziness taking place, I backed away and crumbled onto the floor in front of the bed. My body lost its energy, feeling exhausted and tired. I closed my eyes for a moment, feeling the now cold blood on my face beginning to gel up and dry on my skin. My clothes were still moist along with sweat. The creature clapped its hands together, moving out from the corner of the room, and stood over me. I glared up at him as he stared down at me. That was beautiful, it said in a harsh whisper. I said nothing in return and continued to glare at him. I felt the shadows causing me to have another spasm of pain through my body as they were leaving. The shadows danced around the creature, returning back to its rightful place. Until next time, the creature said, fading out and disappearing. I was left alone, tears falling from my eyes. My heart felt broken, and I screamed loudly, wishing this had never happened. Wishing it was all a dream. I heard the front door crash open, a heavy footing coming down the hall. The beam of flashlights pointed directly towards me. I sat there, cradling my mother's corpse, humming her tune of yesterday. What the... a male voice said. A hand was on my shoulder. Hey kid, you alright? Another male's voice asked. I hummed away, rocking my mother's body back and forth. I heard the radio crackling as a man called in dispatch. Tenady, we got a murder crime scene. Backup and paramedics needed. Two adults, mutilated, and one survivor. 10-4, ambulance and backup is on its way. A woman's voice answered back. The one holding my shoulder spoke to another man in the room. He looks to be in shock. No shit, he said in a low voice. Sirens rang the dead of night and one of the paramedics removed my mother from me. They laid her down while flashes from a camera were taken by a medical examiner. I was led out the bathroom and was sent to sit inside of a police vehicle. Another male police officer got in the driver's side and looked at me through the rearview mirror. You know, if you committed this crime, you'll be in prison for a long time, right? He asked. I just stared at the black leather interior of the seat and said nothing. Well, we'll start doing the paperwork after you confess, he said, beginning to drive us away from my home. I averted my eyes from the window car and seen the creature floating, staring at me. It smiled, fangs hanging from its mouth and waving its long claws in a goodbye. I shivered in fear and looked away, knowing that I'll see that beast very soon. But... How soon? Again, I just want to give a quick, quick thank you to Justin Collins for submitting his incredible, incredibly creepy story. I really, really enjoyed reading it, and I apologize that this is the only story for this episode, but I felt like 30-ish minutes would be definitely long enough. Um, thank you again, Justin, one more time. All of his links, including the one to his book, will be in the description below. Thank you again to everyone who watched and hung out for a while. And remember, you can check out some of my audiobooks on audible.com. That will also be linked in the description. I really appreciate that, and it helps me out. But until the next Graveyard Shift, everyone, thanks again for listening, and stay safe out there.